good time to make this confession. You know, it, it was Monday afternoon about 3 o'clock, and, and I'm in my office, and I decided to look at the gospel reading for this weekend, the one I just read, 13th chapter of Luke, verses 22 to 30, to see if I could come up with some ideas for the homily this weekend. So I'm, I'm reading this gospel reading, then something caught my eye out the window. So I looked out the window, and the sky was blue, and the sun was shining, and I noticed a few people traveling through the parking lot and pedal bikes. And there was this carefree-looking dog running right down the sidewalk, right outside of my office window. And I thought to myself, well, that, is, that looks very inviting. But I decided to pull away from those distractions, look back into the gospel itself so I could continue to do what I set out to do. Within seconds, as I'm reading a section of today's gospel reading, one word caught my eye. And when I read that word, I said to myself, that's it. I jumped up, I shut the lights off in the office, I ran out of the office, and, and I left to play hooky for the rest of the day. It was about 3 o'clock in the afternoon, though, I remind you. What I like to do, though, is take a look at the section of the gospel ring that I read that made me say to myself, when I saw this one word, I can't stay in this office. Let's take a look at verse 25, 13th chapter of Luke. And I'll read the whole thing, see if you can find the word I'm talking about. After the master of the house has arisen and locked the door, then you will stand outside knocking, saying, Lord, open the door for us. He will say to you and reply, I do not know where you are from. Now, there's a word there that when I read that word, I said to myself, I can't stay in this office. What's the word? You see it? There it is. Let's take a look at this word right here. The word outside. When I saw that word outside, and I saw the outside just before I read that word, I said to myself, I can't stay in this office. The blue sky and the dog running down the sidewalk, he looks so carefree. I said to myself, I have to go outside. You see, it said if you want to feel God and see God and taste God and enjoy God, you have to do that sometimes outside. God is the architect of creation, and the architect always leaves an imprint of who he is and that which he creates. And we're talking about going outside. We're not just saying traveling from your car to church or your church to the car, your car to the store, and back to your car and then back in the house. We're actually talking about going outside and enjoying the summer, enjoying God's creation, walking in your yard, perhaps the backyard is might, where your woods might be located, going over to Kotecki Park and Northmoreland Park and, and just taking the time to enjoy something that is free and something that is a gift for all of us that's just enjoying the outside. Well, there's so many things to enjoy when you look at the outside, just the beauty of God's creation. Let's, let's take a look at this one item right here. Now that's the spider's web. You know, growing up, I always believed that every spider in the face of the earth had one purpose, one goal. I used to believe that every spider had one purpose, and that was to scare me. But I discovered as I got a little older, most spiders are trying to do the same thing I'm trying to do in the course of a day, just survive. Now, when you look at that orb web, not, not every spider makes this particular style of web. A lot of spiders in your shrubs and your grass and near the ground, they make the funnel web. That's a masterpiece as well. But the orb web is absolutely incredible. Just look at the beauty of that web. Only God could create the insect that could create that web. There's been a lot of technological advances that humans have made, but we cannot duplicate in style and how it's made the spider's web. Without the assistance of a protractor or a transit or a slide roll, the spider makes that incredible, near perfect, I would have to say perfect, looks like the outside's got a little disturbed maybe by the weather, but makes a perfect web. When you enjoy God's nature, and if you run across one of those, before you touch it, you'll see the spider in the center. He's waiting for his prey. The spider that hangs out of that web, if something lands in his web, he will not attack it initially. He always makes sure that what, is landed, what has landed in his web is smaller than he is. If it's bigger than he is, he will set it free, because he realizes anything bigger than me could probably overpower me, and I don't want that. So the next time you're outside enjoying God's creation, if you see one of these, what you're going to see is only the good Lord who can make the spider, who can make that masterpiece. Let's take another look at God's beautiful creation. The daisy. That represents all flowers. When I was growing up, I was told that if you think someone likes you, you, you pick a daisy. 
You get the little pedal, she loves me, she loves me not. Ever do that? I was in the eighth grade and this new gal moved into our school from 10 Hills up to Franklin Regional. And, and, and she got in class and I said to myself, just what I've been waiting for all my life. She was pretty cute. So I asked the teacher if I could move my desk to be closer to her and she allowed me to do that. So one day I'm walking home from school and I see a daisy and I thought, I gotta find out if this is making a connection here. So I got the daisy and I start off, she loves me, she loves me not. The last petal said she loves me not. So I thought to myself, bad daisy. <laughs> I threw that and went away and I start over again. Then I start, she loves me, she loves me not. Now the last petal, that daisy said she loves me. And I was petrified, I didn't know what to do about it. The next day, literally, I asked the teacher if I could move my desk back to its old location. <laughs> and literally, I spent the rest of the year avoiding that gal. It's, it's probably the foundation of my priesthood. But, <laughs> but it's the daisy. It's, it's God's beautiful creation. They're the same all the time. When I was young, that's the way the daisy looked like. That's what they look like now. 50 years from now, that daisy will look exactly the same. They, they don't alter. That's, that's the daisy. But only God create, can create a beautiful flower, something that beautiful. But in order to enjoy that, you need to go outside. And when you're out there, you've got to put the cell phone away and just put all distractions away and enjoy God's creation outside. Just, just walk around your yard. Just... Allow yourself the opportunity to see God in his creation. Now let's take a look at this other beautiful item that we'll find outside. The little brown ant, look at the size of that thing the brown ant is carrying. Isn't that amazing? You've seen this play out. I was eating a piece of cake, chocolate cake with white icing, which is my favorite. And, and I was enjoying it, I probably was a little messy, and, and apparently a big piece of chocolate from my cake, chocolate cake, fell off the plate, landed on a porch, on a sidewalk. About 20 minutes later, I'm sitting there, my cake is, is devoured by me, but I'm sitting there, and I see this piece of black cake moving along the sidewalk. <laughs> black cake doesn't move, I thought to myself. So I picked up that little piece of black cake, and what was under that piece of black cake? was one of these little brown ants. I thought to myself, is that, he is really, really strong. So I'm looking around trying to figure out where, where he's headed because I thought to myself, I could really help him out. I'll just carry him and his cake <laughs> over to the cracks and save him a lot of time and effort. But I thought to myself, there were a few cracks in the sidewalk, but then I thought, when he gets to the crack he's going to, how's he gonna get that big piece of cake through that little crack in the sidewalk? But what an interesting thing that the God places in this world for all of us to enjoy if we just say, and you can still be busy. Doesn't mean that I'm so busy I don't have the time to do it. Doesn't take that much time to, to go outside and enjoy the beautiful creation of God is free. You know, I, I was reading about these little brown ants. These guys are amazing. A brown ant can carry 100 times its own weight. 100 times its own weight. Most people can't even carry their own weight. Most people can't even carry half of their weight. But think about it for a moment. If you could carry 100 times your own weight, you know what that means? If you could carry 100 times your own weight, that would mean that, mean that next time your car runs out of gas, simply pick it up and walk it to the gas station. <laughs> Just see a guy with his car under his arm going to the gas station. <laughs> God's creation, it's, it's a gift. It is free. And summer's a great time, and fall and spring and winter, they're all beautiful. It's all beautiful times to enjoy God's creation. But summer seems to be that time where you see these dimensions of God's creation that you're not going to see in the winter, such as the flower. You're not going to be eating anything outside probably in the winter, so you won't see the activity of the incredible ant. So before school starts, for many of our students, it will be this week and for the locals and next week for others. Before summer ends, do yourself a favor. Enjoy what is God's gift to you, God's gift to all of us. That is the outside. If you want to see God and taste God and smell God and, and just enjoy Him, you want to go outside 
walk through your yard, and allow yourself the opportunity to experience God's creation. Because here's what happens. An architect, and God is the architect of creation, an architect always leaves an imprint of who or what she is and that which they create. If you want to feel God, taste God, and see God, you got to go outside and enjoy God's creation. And in doing that, you'll get a glimpse of what God looks like. 